This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 Forest River Salem model 27 RE. This is not a floor plan video, it's a how to video, so I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? Alright, so you have crank down, regular crank down stabilizers, okay? But these, this trailer has an added feature, it's called a strong arm. Each jack has this, this other component to it and basically here, let me get down here. basically the thing to know is that you have a you have this T handle here the threaded T handle and you're gonna have this loose when you're raising and lowering the, the stabilizers right but when you get them in position when you lower them into position and get the stabilized like you want it then you're gonna tighten it up so it keeps the inner tube um, from moving through in the outer tube so it stables the forward and rearward movement. So you, when you're bringing it up or bringing them down, you want it, uh, uh, that T-handle loose. But once you get it into position and stabilize, tighten it up and snug it up so it, it does its job, okay? Of course, there's one of those on each, uh, each um, jack. Okay. You have a, a slide out on your awning with a uh, LED strip and then you have another slide out on the door side of the I'm sorry another awning on the door side of the trailer with a uh, LED strip so outside speakers you have a power and then of course TV hook up here if you wanted to put a TV out here pass through storage so this is a um, that's just a reducer for your power cord, your short cord. That is your dump hose. And then over here, we have your cranks. Now this is the three quarter inch crank right here. It just goes on a drill. Okay, this piece has to do with uh, the awning. If the awning was to fail, you'll have to read the directions while you're looking at it to, to, uh, to learn how to use that. You never really should have to use it. I've never used one. Um, I said this was pass through, but obviously it's not. It's, it's uh, it's got, I think the, the furnace and maybe the water tank is right there, or the water heater is right there. Um, also, uh, you, you get this small crank here. The small crank is for the uh, power tongue jack. So, if your power tongue jack happens to fail for, wh for whatever reason, you can pull this plug here. You can put the crank on there and you can crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble. Okay, you also have a... Uh, Two LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. You got a deep cycle marine battery, and that is the kill switch for the battery right there. You can turn it on and off right there. Okay. Your water heater is right here. Get with one hand here. Um, so the thing to know about this is this runs on gas or electric, right? There is an electric heating element behind this cover here and it's controlled by this rocker switch right here. So keep in mind that you can turn it on and off right there. Now to light the gas burner that's done inside, there's a switch inside, but don't forget that you, you can run the electric heating element by using the switch out here. Never run it without water in the tank, always make sure there's water in it, okay? Um, also, this is where you drain it at, it takes an inch and a sixteen six point socket, um, and it's under pressure, so keep that in mind, don't. Make sure it cools down and you release the pressure by opening the hot water valves on the trailer before you, you take out the plug, otherwise it'll, it'll come flying out of there like a, like a cannonball with water behind it. So keep that in mind, okay? Uh, this is just a vent for your furnace. These are your dump valves here, okay? You got gray tank valves, black tank valves. Um, this is your black tank flush here, so keep in mind that uh, after you dump your black tank, you can leave the valve open, right, and then hook the hose at the, at the dump station right on there, turn it on, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean up the sensors, that sort of thing. But like it says on this sticker, make sure you have, uh, you've um, uh, left the, the, the uh, dump valve open before you turn the water on, it's important obviously. And then you have a 30 foot, 30 amp power cord. I showed you the reducer we give you to reduce it to a 20. 
Okay, cable and satellite through. You're pre-wired for a backup camera. That's a Furion camera if you're interested in adding one. You're also uh, pre-hooked up for a, a Lippert telescoping ladder if you're interested in that. Um, while we're looking up, keep in mind that the manufacturer states you should inspect the roof every 60 days, so you want to keep after the roof, make sure there's no damage to it by low branches or road debris, make sure there's no cracking or separation at any of the sealant. Just give it a good, inspe good inspection, it should be part of your regular maintenance. Okay, so the most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water hookup, which is right here. Okay. If you're camping someplace without city water, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right there and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. So um, even if you're boondocking and you don't have city water, you can fill up your pre-fill your fresh water tank and you'll, all the plumbing will work as though you have city water. Okay. All right, so let's look inside here. See what's what. Okay. All right. Starting to cool down. I think he's getting ready for us. Okay. So let me get some lights going here. Okay. All right. So this is the control panel when you first come in the door. So you can see the water pump is right here. Everybody tells you you can pump water out of the fresh water tank. That's where you turn it on and off right there. You also use this water pump to uh, winterize the trailer when, uh, when you're pumping the antifreeze in and out, okay? Um, to let your water heat our gas is right there. Remember I showed you there's a switch in the lower left hand corner for the electric heating element. Never run it without water in it. Slide room. All right. Switch awning switch. Wait a minute, let me get now. Two slide room switches. All right, door side and off door side. And then you're, you have an awning here. And uh, let me make sure I got this right. I think that's right. Okay. Okay. So this controls your, your slide rooms here, this one right here. This controls your, the awning out that's attached to the door side of the trailer. And then uh, this does the awning on the slide room and this controls the other slide room. So, okay, all right. A little unusual, but, okay. So this is your power converter right here. This converts AC to DC power. So when you're plugged into shore power, you have 110 AC here, 110 volts AC. Uh, and so you have regular circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and they're all labeled here. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, and you have 12 volt fuses, obviously, and they're all labeled. This is also a battery tender, so when you're plugged in to shore power, it'll, it'll always keep your battery up front charged. So uh, that's, that's obviously uh, important. It also will auto detect the kind of batteries you have, so it's, it's smart that way. And it's smart. Uh, in the amount of energy it sends up there too. If, the, if your batteries are your batteries topped off, then it's only going to send a few amps up there to trickle charge it. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs. So keep that in mind. Also, when you're pulling down the road, obviously your your tow vehicle's alternator will charge the battery. Okay. All right. Let me get on my feet here. Okay. So moving forward, the keys are hanging right here. So you can drop this table down onto the cleats here, turn this into a bed if you want. This section comes out and you can move it into different configurations. You can move it back here, you can move it up to here, um, and then you also have these other cushions to fill in the spaces, right? This is a jackknife sofa here, so jackknife's flat, so you can turn that into a second place to sleep if you want. Uh, this, this here, this, uh, uh, maybe this one isn't that. Yes. There is there's probably going to be paperwork in your in your uh, in your packet that, that gives you more information on your Versa Lounge, but it's not hard to figure out. You can there's you just a little time with it and you'll, you'll see what configurations are possible. Okay, so you have two seats. Um, this is your entertainment area, and there's going to be two remotes right here. 
So the small remote right here is for the fireplace. This one's for your sound bar. Your TV will hang right here if you add a TV. There's your hookups right there. But the, the fireplace runs on 110 AC. So yeah, right there. Now, if you look there, it's low, high, right? That's the fan speed. So it's a really good space heater, so it'll kick out. Uh, if you put it a high, for example, example, it really kicks them out. Um, so while you're uh, also, you can change the the crystals, color of the crystals. You can change the flame color, like so. And it has a timer, so you can set the timer to turn on and off when you when you want it to. Okay. The uh, sound bar remote. This has FM radio, but no AM. So just FM, uh, which I think stinks, but that's the way it is. Um, we're seeing more and more of that, by the way. Um, you have a, a USB drive there, so you could put all your MP3s onto one, you know, one little stick and take them all with you, whatever. You have an HDMI in if you want to go into the system with, with let's say, a portable Blu-ray player or something like that. Um, you have Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly with your, you know, from your phone or your tablet. Uh, and of course, two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. So, there's everything you need and then some. Alrighty, so, this is your packet with all your, your literature in it. This is a touch-up kit that you always get with it, a crayon and a marker. Microwave works like any other microwave. Range hood here with a fan and a light. Okay, your, I don't know if you've got the gas turned on here, but your range top, uh, you have three burners obviously, and then three knobs right in the center here. This knob here is the sparker, you turn it clockwise to spark it, and that's the oven knob. So let me see if he's got the gas turned on here. No, of course not. But anyway, if he did, when you put it to high, you spark it, it'll light right up, okay? Um, when it comes to the oven, there's a light here, you can turn it on and off. But there's a pilot light all the way at the bottom in the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see. Yeah, you can see the spark back there. So you're going to go to the oven knob. You go to the picture of the flame. And then you depress the knob. You keep it depressed while you're lighting it. You spark by turning this clockwise till the pilot light lights. Once the pilot light lights, you still hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature and you're all set. When you shut it off, the pilot light goes out, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Always travel with this shut in a down position. Okay, your refrigerator is a 12 volt DC refrigerator with a compressor, so it's 12 volt compressor. Always latch it so you don't dent, dent the doors. This device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. If not, get it serviced, right? If you don't see it, the pilot light lit, get it serviced. Detect carbon monoxide and LP gas. If it goes off, you, you take, open the door, shut the appliances off, take everybody outside, um, shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, your thermostat is very simple. You just hit the mode, and then you, you go through the different modes and pick out the one you want. If they give you a fan option, always use auto. That's the best way to go. This is telling us that this is pre-wired for a, a public Wi-Fi uh, booster. And um, which would consist of a router that goes here and then an antenna that goes on the roof. There's another attachment on the roof. So you'd have an antenna plus a router. It just gives you better public Wi-Fi for your family if you're interested in upgrading. If you, if you are, you just go to kingconnect.com and look at their pre-wired kits and see what they've got. Always look at the one with the antenna. I don't know if they still sell the one without, but you always want the antenna. Okay? All righty. So let's see what else we have here. Um, let me look around see if I forgot anything. This this is going to be where you winterize your trailer right here. Right, so you're going to... All the screws are number two square headed screws, so that's behind there. Um, let me go forward here. Your bathroom works like they all do. It's uh, You have a, do have a GFCI in here. And all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, so keep that in mind. Uh, you'll reset it in here if you need to. Uh, the 
Uh, shower works like any other shower. The sink works like any other sink. The toilet, like all RV toilets, sits right over a black tank. So there's the flush pedal right there. Um, the black tank's directly below. So when you get to the campground, you can't use it dry. Dry meaning nothing in the black tank. So you have to put chemical and water in there. So you put a dose of chemical in the bowl. Then you step on the, uh, this is after you hook up your power and your water. You put a dose of chemical in the bowl and you step on the pedal and let at least a gallon of water flow in there along with the chemical. And then you're all set. You can't use it dry because the smell will be terrible plus it'll get clogged up. So keep that in mind. At least a gallon of water you can use more if you if you choose to. Okay, I'm going to shut this off up here. Okay. okay, so, sorry about my camera work. So I always put a disclaimer up because I always say that. Okay, so you have more TV hookups here. This, just so you know, this is always needs to be on. This is the digital signal booster for the antenna. You can shut it off, but you always want it glowing green. And you have a backer plate here if you wanted to put, hang a TV. You have your emergency window, which works like this. You push it all the way through, all the way through. Then you grab a hold of the tab and pull the screen out, and you can escape during an emergency. Uh, you have some storage under here, of course. Um, lights, shades, the usual stuff, and then you got some decent storage here too, which is a cool thing. A lot of times you don't have that much storage where you can actually hang up wardrobe, so it's a good feature. Okay, so let me look around here. I think we've covered it. You have straps to strap your chairs into place when you're traveling so they don't bounce around and do some damage, okay? Um, okay. So I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 60 days. You want to keep after that. It's part of owning the trailer. It's part of general maintenance. So make sure you take care of that. Right now, this is in uh, water-wise, plumbing-wise. The antifreeze has been purged from the system. It's been replaced with fresh water. The water heater is in camping mode and has water in it. So you're all set. Never run the water heater without water in it. Okay? Thank you.